Apka sehe grazia. I'm Gary Megan. I'm George Kalambaris. And I'm Matt Preston. Hmm. We are all taking the pressure, pressure test. test. Oh, okay. I love that thousand layer paneer that yeah. um, the, the, uh, the Manish man makes. So I yeah. think we should, I'll make the paneer. I'll cut it up. You pick a flavor. Um, oh, I can't, are we going to do that? I want to layer it in. Can we have that? Can we also have some? Um, uh, Kasuri menthi? No, no, no. Well, no well, I want some, yeah, some kithri. Let's do that. Let's do kithri menthi because that's what Let's do some fresh methi as well. Some fresh fenugreek leaves in there. Love that. Now we need that's some more fruit on. Only four ingredients. Yeah, it's okay. So we've got paneer. I've cut it up into a thousand yeah. layers. We put in, actually, I might put it in the paneer itself and then we're going to grill it and then we're going to pop it on something. What are we going to pop it on? A little grilled paneer. What, uh, anything interesting? What, what about like, um, like romesco, but made? Ooh. With so that, made, made, yeah. with, made with cashews yep. and made with green chili. Great idea. Yep. And then yep. we can incorporate the kasuri menthi in that yeah, as well, which nice would idea. be fantastic. And, and, and we could use fresh menthi leaves as well. That, that'd be nice. A little stir fry of a fresh menthi leaves. Yeah, so stir fry fresh menthi leaves. We're, we're grilling that paneer on the Yeah, we're doing George's uh, Indian romesco. That's right. And oh. our thousand layer paneer. Well done. Well. Or alternatively, we could do, because I do love it, I do love sweet and sour paneer, and I do also love a paneer 65. That oh. take on chicken 65, but made with, made with paneer instead of chicken. Let's make both, and we'll snack on the paneer 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scallops. Oh. I just love a seared scallop with a really, like, ridiculously buttery mashed potato. But there's an Indian version of buttery mashed potato. I reckon oh. scallops go pretty well with it. Uh, scallops with curry butter sauce. Oh, curry butter nice. sauce. For me, um, really good scallops sliced really thinly. This is in every restaurant in Australia at the moment, sliced really thinly. Um, some fresh local uh, sea herbs, and then a little, a little emulsion of oysters and Mm. And I'm just thinking fish moile with my scallops. Mm. I just love that sauce from the moile and loads of scallops. Yeah, but don't Curry over, leaves. Don't overcook the scallops. Little tadka. I, the, the, you got to put the. Oh no, seared, yeah. seared, roasted. So, so the sauce. sauce is separate, and then the scallops go on top. Yeah. Right. Oh, we like macadamia. What, what just make praline. Yeah, that's right. Would you? You make yeah. A bit of toast, sea salt on top and toast them really yeah, well. Yeah, but so you've really on gold. the menu. You've got uh, macadamia nuts scordalia. Mm. Delicious. Two ingredients. Water really and, beautiful. And water and macadamias. Yeah. Which is beautiful. So smoothy, mm. smooth, creamy, delicious. And then what do you plonk on top of that? Spanakop with the bites. Spanakop with the bites. Or, or let, let's make a let's make a osmosis. Or samosas. A samosa with macadamia nut cream. Smashed, I love yeah. it. Almost like uh, Raj Kachori, but with macadamia nut cream. Yeah, or soak them, soak them, puree them, and use them in, um, in your korma. Oh! <laughs> Can I go first? Can I go first? Because it's not really making anything, but I just love really kind of thick, soft bread with a ton of butter, you know, biteable butter that starts to melt and then you squidge the Vegemite on. It's not a dish, but it's so nice. And what have you got on at the moment? So on the menu, which is uh, for our kanosh dinner, um, we're doing uh, a little Vegemite and feta scroll. Mm. So basically using puff pastry, brushing it with the Vegemite, um, uh, some some feta, you can actually put some caramelized onions in there if you like, roll that up, slice it thin, bake it, that like sit in front of the tally and eat them, fancy yeah. chips. Okay, I've, I've got one, and th I, this is fascinating because you don't know about, you know Nigella does mm. this Anna Del Conte Vegemite pasta, yeah. um, which is a Marmite pasta, and it's always about, it's an English dish. I posted this and all <coughs> these different Maltese kids said my grandmother used to make this back in the 60s and 70s. So I reckon it's an Australian dish made with Vegemite. You get, you make your pasta, you get a little bit of pasta water, melt some, melt some butter, Vegemite melted into, into the butter, a little bit of the pasta water, and then you toss your pasta through that, the, 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 the fat in the butter, the water emulsifies, you get saltiness in the Vegemite, and you serve it. In terms of comfort food, it's absolutely delicious. These delicious. are longer than 15 seconds. Yeah. Can I ask a question though? Do you, is it just me or do you go into the cupboard with a spoon and take a spoon of Vegemite? Not anymore. And I can tell you why. Why? Is it bad? Because no. I do that. No, no, because you remember peanut butter out of the jar, absolutely spoon. Yeah. Or just a finger. The, the, it changed, it changed about 10 years ago and it, people stopped doing it. And I asked Charles Spence, you know, who works mm. with Heston. The, he's a, he's a professor in neuroscience. At Oxford Stick University. with us. It's good. Stick with us. Um, and he said that, that, that it's that perception of weight of the jar. When it goes in a plastic jar, it doesn't feel as luxurious. And that's why you don't appreciate it so oh. much. But if you've got an ulcer in your mouth, a great. spoon oh, of Vegemite. Great. Yeah. For an ulcer. That's painful. 
Painful, so I'm yeah. the only one that goes in with a spoon into the cupboard and takes spoonfuls of Vegemite. No, I prefer the peanut butter. Or yeah. the <laughs> peanut butter or, or what about some apricot Do you double dip sandwich? peanut butter and jam? Do you yeah, do that yeah, thing? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I like that. Peanut butter, apricot jam or mango chutney and peanut butter. Right. <gasps> I reckon you, you, you can make a beautiful uh, custard out of uh, a proper chai with good amount of cardamom, black pepper, uh, plenty of ginger. And you make that, you know, a creme caramel type mm. or Spanish flan, you know, beautiful. Flan. Yum. I'm caramel, making... jaggery caramel. Oof. I'm making a chai cream. Chai cream. Can I put a scoop of chai cream next to my, onto my jaggery caramel and flan? Do you want to put something else on there? Make a chai shortbread. Yeah, nice. Ooh. Really nice. Lots of butter. Chai time. Oh, that's easy. Oh, flour, flour, butter, butter so clove. Milk. But you should do a cluted onion, clove which is onion leaf. studded with, with cloves. Uh, cloves and yep. a bay leaf. And a bay leaf. And, and, in, the and milk. in the milk. And pepper and salt. And then you remove it out of the milk. Oh, hollandaise. Start yeah. off with a sabion. So it's got to have a hollandaise reduction, which is vinegar, uh, white wine. You need aromatics in there, of course, a few peppercorns, maybe a bay leaf sprig of thyme, reduce that down. Then you need your egg yolks. Then you need your butter. And then you need lemon. And then technically, you should put cayenne pepper in. This is like fan fiction, this is the Gary talking about French sauces. I, I could have this recorded. Do you know I used to make to every bloody day when I was on the veg section of the Connaught, we used to make three litres of hollandaise sauce mm. and one litre of Bernays sauce per service. That's wow. a lot of egg yolks. That's a lot of egg yolks. Chimichurri. Uh, chili, vinegar, um, oregano, parsley, um, then, and then whatever green and other stuff you got. I like putting some really thinly sliced spring onion in there, but it's got to have a bit of heat. It's got to put a lot of vinegar. Capsicum, um, almonds, olive oil, garlic, uh, bread. bread. Yep. Definitely. Salt. Salt. That's, that's mm -hmm. it. That's yeah. pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. smoky paprika. Oh, oh that's yeah. a nice. Yeah, no, yeah, nice, nice little nice addition. Oh, Good my. old hummus. Okay, number. So Oof. we could argue about this one, couldn't we? Yeah. But number one, and this is something that we all saw when we were in Dubai filming with MasterChef, <coughs> was the the two ice cubes when you yeah. blend the hummus, yeah. because that one emulsifies the olive oil, also keeps the blender cool. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, the tip that I loved was a tip from Yotam Makalengi again, who was on MasterChef, and that was that was when you when you get your chickpeas um, and they're cooked, drain them, place them in a tea towel, rub them. Take the skins off. To take all the oh, skins it's a off. Pain in the bum. Uh, but but I've worked it. There's a really good way you do it now. What you do is you then throw that into a, into a large pot of water, and all the skins float off when you rub them between your hands. Idea. And then you scoop that off with a, a sieve, and then you're left with clean. I can't my, be my, with that one. my thing is, uh, use a very neutral oil to make the hummus, yeah, yeah. and dress with olive oil. Yeah. Um, and also cook the, soak the chickpeas, cook the chickpeas, leave them in the water overnight, yeah. cool down, and use that water. Chickpea water. Yeah, which is super delicious. But don't forget, roast, I love roasted cumin powder. That's like one yep. of my go-tos. Mm. Little tiny bit of garlic, not too much. Yeah, not too good much. Good amount garlic. of lemon, good amount of lemon, mm. and plenty of that olive oil at the end. Uh, and I, I think you've got to have a really good spoonful of tahini in there as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love the uh, green harachana. You know, the harachana, you know, the green chickpea when it's in season, you make it exactly the same way. It's yeah. so delicious. Yeah, but we don't get that in, we don't get that. You, I'm not in Australia, it's ridiculous. We don't get it. You get it frozen in Indian groceries, but what yeah. you can do.